I did want to emphasize there are many times when the normal force is not equal to the force of gravity. Uh, we showed one when we drew our free body diagrams and you're pulling a rope up, uh, upward a little bit, although the object's not moving, the normal force won't be equal to the force of gravity. Notice in this situation right here, the normal force not equal to the force of gravity, which is down here. In this situation, if you're in that uh, the a famous amusement park ride, which has made many students sick, but it's very fun, is the rotor where you, uh, it's, it's like a spinning cylinder and you get, you feel like you're getting pinned to the wall, the normal force is actually perpendicular to the wall, which is not equal to the force of gravity in this situation. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. We're going to do the Atwood machine problem. That's a problem like this. You've got a massless pulley here, no mass. And we've got several objects hanging from the massless pulley there. And we've got uh, an M right here, a mass one. And we've got uh, some, some uh, bigger masses, or total bigger mass. This is uh, M2. And a big old mass right here, M3. So the question is, that we're going to ask in this situation, we're, it's massless pulley for now. Um, later we'll have to deal with a pulley that does have mass. But for now, massless pulleys. These are ropes, these are masses. And we're going to assume that the sum of M2 and M3 are greater than M1. The questions we're going to ask are, what is the acceleration of this system? And what are the tensions? I'm going to use the symbol T for the force of tension. You could use, if you prefer, you could use F sub T for tension for all the ropes. How do we tackle this problem? This is a complex problem. Another problem is that it's going up and down. Uh, but if this goes down, that goes up. So which way do we make positive? I'm going to draw free body diagrams right on this diagram right here. So for M1, what are our forces? Well, we've got force of gravity, M1G pulling down that way. And is there a force pulling up on it? Well, you may say, oh, the normal force. There is no normal force. This is not on a surface. If there is a force up, we'd have to call it the force of tension. I'm going to draw it right here. This is due to that rope. I'm going to call it uh, T1. And this is why I like to use T instead of F sub T because I won't need double subscripts. That's the tension one right there. Now, as long as there's no mass between uh, two parts of a rope, we can say for sure that this is also T1. The, the rope tension will be the same as long as there's no masses in between them. And because our pulley has no mass, we do know that this part of the rope has the same tension. It is not true if the pulley has mass. T1, notice that ropes can only pull. T1 is pulling up on this mass too. Now this is a different free body diagram. I'm showing the free body diagram for M2. We've got T1 pulling up on that. Ropes can only pull. What other forces do I have on M2? Well, I've got the force of gravity pulling on it, M2G. And I also have another force. I've got the force of tension of this rope. I'm going to cut. Now, this is a different rope, and this is pulling down on M2. So this is, I'm going to call that T2. Is it the same as T1? No, it's not, because it's there is a mass between these two ropes. So this rope is going to have some different amount of tension on it. That is the complete free body diagram for M2. Now let's draw a free body diagram for M3. For M3, we have M3G, but we also have this T2, but I'm going to draw it up like this. Notice the tensions can only pull on objects. This is also the same T2 because it's the same rope, but it's pulling up on M3. Now this looks impossible. There's so many forces. There's so many different objects. How do we deal with this? Well, if we just take it one step at a time, it turns out to be just not that bad. What we're going to do is create one equation for each object. But before we do that, we have to determine which way are we going to call positive. And that's a little bit tricky because when M1 is going up, well, M3 and M2 are going down, which way do we call positive? In general, we always want to make the direction of acceleration positive because then we won't have to put a negative A anywhere in our equations. But how do we do that? Because it's accelerating up on the left and down on the right. 
well, there's actually an easy solution. If you just make the clockwise direction positive, that means that when uh, the left side is going upward, the, the right side is going downward, and we'll just call that direction positive. Problem solved. So just around to the right clockwise is going to be positive. So then all we got to do is just create one equation for each object. Let's start with object one. First, we'll just put in Newton's second law for object one. And the net force one equals m1a1. And then we just get more specific. So what are the forces on object one? Well, I've got positive t1. Notice that that's going around clockwise up on the left is positive, And minus m1g. And those two are the specific forces that make up the net force on one. And they will equal m1a. Hey, we're pretty much done with that equation. Now let's look at object two. We'll notice that on object two, we now have three different forces on object two. First, I just write my Newton's second law equation for object two. Net force on two equals m2a2. And then, well, what are the forces on it? I've got t1, I've got t2, and I've got m2g. Which is positive and which is negative? Well, according to my consistent clockwise is positive formulation, we're going to have t1 is going to be negative in this case. Because notice that t1 is, is pulling that thing anti-clockwise, or up on the right. So we're going to call that negative, because I've defined down on the right to be positive. And t2 for m2 is going to be positive. And m2g is also positive. So what I get is negative t1 plus t2 plus m2g equals m2a2. That one's done. Now let's look at object m3. What do we do? Well, we've got m3g. That's going down. That's going to be positive. t2, positive or negative? Hmm. Well, it was positive in the other situation. But here, it's negative because t2 is pulling m3 upward on the right. So we got to make t2 negative for this equation. So we get negative t2 plus m3g is m3a3. And all we got to do is solve those three equations simultaneously. But you may say, looking at these, wait a second. We got three equations. We got more than three unknowns. Well, which three variables that I've listed here are actually the same variable? Hint, all these objects are connected with a string. So that means that truly a1, a2, and a3 are all the same value. And because I've created clockwise positive, they're all going around clockwise. So I can just re replace all those variables with just a. So here are my three equations that I've got to solve simultaneously. And once you do that, you are done. But there is actually an easier way. There is an easier way because solving simultaneous equations can be time consuming and you can make mistakes with pluses and minuses. So in the next video, I'll show you the easy trick to make it so it's even easier than this. Yes, you can create one equation for each object and solve simultaneously, but there truly is an easier way solving it first for the acceleration as a system. And we'll see that in the next video.